See if I take it. Yep, I eat it. Nice. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of Boost to the Top VGC 2021. Before we start, I have to say my apologies if I sound a little hoarse. I am probably getting sick right now. Hopefully it's not you know what, uh, but I'll keep an eye on it. I'll, I'll try to stay safe and yeah. Um, if you guys want to do me a favor, leave a like in the video if you enjoyed it at any time. <laughs> Sorry, if you enjoyed it at any point in time, uh, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I'll be bringing you guys some daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content. Also, uh, all of my morning uploads for about the next couple of days, like until Friday probably, are going to be from my tournament run for the Players' Cup 2. So keep that in mind for the morning videos. That's uh, Those are live stream highlights, so that actually does, you know, Take a little bit of the workload off of me, but I figured it'd be a good idea to actually catalog those. Speaking of which, I'm going to be using my team that I used in the Players' Cup 2 tournament. Uh, I did pretty well. I think I did pretty well, but um, basically, I, this team I'm going to be releasing code for this weekend. Uh, the full rental, all the information. Uh, I just like to use it online before other people have all the info so I can enjoy it myself. But yeah. Uh, this team is centered around Galarian Moltres and Assault Vest Kartana with some support from Screens Tapu Koko and Tapu Fini, along with Life Orb Landris. If you're wondering why I'm running Screens Tapu Koko instead of Regieleki when Regieleki is usually a bit more useful, it's because Koko does two things better. Um, it functions a lot better next to Marowak, which is really good in this matchup. Or er, er, it helps fix this team's Trick Room matchup. Uh, and also, Tapu Koko is able to take hits just slightly better because it's able to you know, not die to a Life Orb Earthquake from Lando, even behind Reflect. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Once again, if you enjoy it, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, do whatever. Sorry if I'm a little tired, I have like a headache and everything. So yeah, let's do this, let's do this. I feel pretty good about this team. This is one of my favorite teams I've ever made, to be honest. And wow, we have no idea who we're facing, full question marks. As we see, uh, Kartana, Whimsicott, and Didi Female, Hydreigon, Regieleki, and an Entei. Actually a pretty interesting team here. You don't see too many Hydreigon on the ladder, mainly because it just dies to every single Tapu. Um, I think what I want to watch out for here is the Ndidi Whimsicott lead. And my best bet versus that is likely just to get screens up with my Coco. Um, they have quite a few things that actually threaten my Tapu Finny hard, so I might leave that at home for the matchup. Uh, I'll lead off with my Moltres. I'll bring the Marowak in the back, and I think my last Pokemon's going to have to be the Landorus. And that's just to help with the Regieleki. Regieleki is really annoying for this team because we have two weaknesses to it. And the speed control is always annoying when you're out running your own and when you don't have Tailwinds. But uh, Marowak sort of fixes that matchup a lot. As long as you have like Lando and Marowak in the matchup versus a Leki, you're usually going to do pretty fine. <laughs> I can't even like speak correctly. You're usually going to do pretty fine. But yeah. Uh, I just want to say thank you for all the support recently. Channel's blowing up. We're only like... We're less than 1,500 subscribers away from the Reggie Drago cosplay. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I haven't even started working on that, but it looks like it's going to be coming up soon. Alright. So, Reggie, like you, Hydreigon. I think I like this lead. Uh, I'm pretty scared of a possible Earth Power from this Hydreigon. I would like to get screens up, but I'm also slightly concerned about him just going for a pure Thunderbolt into my, <laughs> into my, um, what's it called? Moltres. So what I'll do here is I'll actually try to get a light screen off and switch in my Marowak. And what this will do is if he decides just to go for the straight up offensive option, I'll be able to, I'll be able to redirect away the Thunderbolt. Um, and then I can get my screen up, be able to take the Electroweb later on and go for the light screen, but looks like he's just going to go for the straight up Electro up here. Hopefully no Earth Power coming up. Because I won't be able to take it from that range, especially since I'm now slower. As he goes for Heat Wave, which I'm fine with. Yeah, I should be able to take that pretty well. I have a lot of bulk on these guys. Critical hit on the Marowak is a bit annoying, but as we see, he is Life Orb. I think that if he had Earth Power, he would have gone for it already, so likely it's Protect... Draco Meteor, Dark Pulse, and Heat Wave. Which means that Marowak kind of just goes in here. Like, what does he truly have besides the obvious Dark Pulse? <laughs> I mean, we can just call him on the Dark Pulse as well. I can try to D-Gleam. Yeah, I think I'll just go for the D-Gleam here. 
Um, and I'll get him my Moltres because it's kind of free. He's not going to be going for an electric move here. He'll probably just set up a screen. As they decide to Dynamax, uh, it's in a Luxury Ball. doesn't tell us much about what Pokemon it'll be. I'm hoping it's not the Aleki because that's big, that's big trouble. Uh, looks like it's going to be this here, Hydreigon, which I'm fine with. Probably going to see either a Max Dragon move or a Max... If it's a Max Fire move, I'd be really surprised. I think it's probably just going to be Dark. So they go for another Electroweb up. That actually hurts me quite a bit. I didn't expect them to go for two. I truly didn't think they would go for two there. I do get my weakness policy, though. It looks like this is going to be a game carried on the back of Landorus now, because I can't Dynamax this guy. I do get my Berserk. But like I said, this is no longer safe. There's the Max Darkness. Behind screens, I'll survive, but just barely. Just barely. Now, judging by how they've been playing this game, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they're probably... I'm going to say that they're probably Sash Regieleki and not Screens. Could even be Specs, judging by the damage they've been doing. I think what I want to do is just go for Dynamax on this boy. Max Quake into the Aleki, get my special defense back up and go for Protect on my Moltres. Thinking about how I could have just gone for the uh, <laughs> gone for the uh, Dazzling Gleam turn 1 and knocked out this guy. Okay, that's fine. I think that's fine. Because like I said, we have the screens up. It's all good. And I think they just brought pure special attackers. the Max Darkness into the Lando most likely. No, into the Moltres, which doesn't survive. Honestly, I thought we might have been able to survive that uh, behind Protect and the uh, Light Screen, but unfortunately not. We're going to get our Special Defense back up on our Landris, though. We're going to go for this Max Quake. And I think my play here is actually just going to be... Let me think. How do I, how do I get out of this situation? Because I have put myself in quite a pickle. I need to get rid of that stupid Hydreigon as soon as possible. So my play here might be to protect and max Airstream into the Hydreigon. Because next turn is Dynamax ends. And I might be able to clutch this with just my Landorus. There's the fake tiers. Behind screens, we should take that. Yeah, just barely, but not not comfortably. And we are taking life orb damage too, so that chip is kind of annoying. Max airstream. Yikes, okay. So I mean the the tailwind is a pretty obvious play here. I could try to read it, but I don't know how much I gain from reading it. Because I could just go for the max guard into a flare blitz to knock out that thing. But then I'm still in trouble of getting KO'd by that Whimsicott. So I can try this. Um, I mean, Whimsicott is slightly scarier, I think. No, no, I should always target into Hydreigon. Because we wall the, um, we wall the Whimsicott with the Marowak, so it's going to be close. As he ends up just reading me and going for that. Okay, well, good game. Unfortunately, we are going to lose the first match. I feel like that's tradition on this channel, losing the first match and then winning the next two. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I do disagree with the play that my opponent made by just going for another Electroweb, even though there was a Marowak in the field, but... I mean, they played it how they felt was how they felt was right, so... We'll just go with it. Alright, forfeit that one. Oh. I did not expect to start today with a 4-0. Not after the performance we put up in the previous tournament. <laughs> Dude, my, my bracket for the tournament, though, it was so stacked. And when, when you guys see tomorrow's video, because tomorrow's video is round 3, and spoilers, round 3 is where things sort of fall off. Uh, it's a double elimination tournament, right? So round 3 is my first L I take, and man, I did I did not deserve that L. There was, there was a lot of crits. <laughs> Like, so many crits that you'll be watching the video and you're just going to be like, oh, oh, oh no, oh no, no. <laughs> like, it happens over and over again and you're just like, come on. I mean, like, I live streamed it and I, I got to see some live reactions and I was like, oh, well. At least I know that some people think I was, I was playing well. Okay. This is an interesting team. Um, probably Grassy Seed on the Nihiligo. I haven't seen many Garchomp yet, so that's really cool. I don't think they have Trick Room on the Nihiligo, though. Yeah, this team doesn't feel very Trick Room savvy. I can lead off screens Coco, I think. And next to that... I mean, I kind of want to go Lando on the lead just because the... Just because the Intimidate's so nice versus the Rillaboom, but... I mean, Kartana Coco seems relatively safe. Uh, Marowak in the back to help deal with the Celesteela and the Rillaboom, and I think my last Pokemon is just going to be the Moltres. And we'll go with that. We'll go with that and hope that I don't accidentally Thunderbolt into my own Marowak. I didn't do that for the entirety of that tournament, by the way. That's, that's something I have a bad habit of doing, is forgetting that I'm about to switch into Marowak and then Thunderbolting. It's, it's VGC 2017 all over again. That was a real common thing in 2017. As they lead off Nihiligo and Cineroar. I actually like this lead quite a bit. I mean, it's pretty clear what their play is. Their play should always be to uh, fake out into the Kartana. Or Flare Blitz into it, anticipating my Dynamax. I don't think they would ever uh, go for the fake out into the Tabu Coco. I'm pretty weak to this Nihiligo until I get rid of the Incineroar, though. So I could try to make a read and double into the Incineroar. But I'm not certain if that would actually KO. Hmm. I'm very scared of Dynamax Nihiligo. But I can beat it with the Kartana. I think I'm going to set up a light screen. And go hard into my Moltres. And if they Dynamax the Nihiligo next turn, I'm, I mean, I'm just going to lose my, my Tapu Koko anyway, so next turn I can go into my, my Kartana and Dynamax. So they swap in the Rillaboom, trying to get their Grassy Seed. I'm assuming they're EV'd to be able to survive the Max Steel Spike, so they're probably Dynamaxing here and going for the Max Ooze. Nope, okay, that's actually fine by me. I'm assuming a sludge bomb. As they trigger him. Okay. I can I can live with that. I'm a pretty slow Moltres comparatively to other ones. Uh in fact, actually, hold up, check this out. Let me get in this uh Marowak here. And I'll just protect the Moltres to try to get my weakness policy. They do not like Marowak. There's the Incineroar. The Intimidate goes off, so Marowak is free. <laughs> uh, and I'm assuming they would go for the Max Rockfall into this Moltres here, which behind Light Screen and Reflect will always love the hit.
There's the Max Nihiligo. I'm assuming I'm about to catch a Max Ooze into this, uh, into this Marowak slot. If not a Max Rockfall into the, uh, <laughs> into this, um, Moltres. Which would almost be preferable. No, they just go for the use. And I'm cool with that, because I can actually Dynamax this Marowak now and go for a really powerful Max Phantasm. Plus one, I think I'll still live when I'm Dynamaxed, even though, even though they're at plus one because I have the screens up. I'm not certain. It's, it's pretty close. Um, but I'll just go ahead and go for the Fiery Wrath here to try to sneak in a KO. Because I think they have to go for it into the Marowak. Okay. Let's see how much this does. I mean, it does have a grassy seed boost and stuff, but it's still in a hill ago. Yeah, that looks about right. So if I survive this turn and I get my Fiery Wrath off, um, I should be able to KO it. So the parting shot makes sense. And the Celesteela comes in. As they go for the max rockfall. See if I take it. Yep, I eat it. Nice. So I'm gonna get my uh I'm gonna get my move off here. And we do know that the Nihiligo is uh <laughs> we do know the Nihiligo oh, okay, I thought I misclicked. The Nihiligo is going to be slower than the Moltres outside of Trick Room. And I think it would be a, a hard throw if I weren't, if I if I didn't just max guard here, because I can pretty much guarantee a KO on the on the next turn by doing that. So I'll double protect, I'll max guard, protect, and once the Dynamax is over, because yeah, I figured he would just intimidate me again. Since I got minus one defense on him and his HP's cut in half, I believe this will still KO. Let's see if they max guard. Yep. Nice. And their Dynamax is going to end here. But I think what my play is... Here, here's what's going to happen, right? Their Dynamax is going to end. I still have one very powerful Max Phantasm to drop onto them. They could try to switch out. Um, but Kartana is in a really good spot if they do. Because I'm going to drop a defense on the Incineroar. Making sure that I KO it with Smart Strike. Or not Smart Strike. Uh, Sacred Sword. And there's one turn left to Trick Room, so there's really no reason not to just go for the Phantasm into the Nihiligo and try to get in the Kartana. Because it's not like Nihiligo has anything to really hit me. There's the Celesteela. Come on, KO. Nice. Yeah, Nihiligo is very frail on the physical side unless you Dynamax it with a Grassy Seed. I remember this from VGC 17, another 17 callback. Th this entire match looks like a 17 match. Um, in, in 17, you would see that sort of thing a lot. Uh, Nihiligo being given a Grassy Seed by Tapu Bulu with Arcanine supporting it actually instead of Incineroar because we didn't have Intimidate Incineroar back then. 
And I'd say it's pretty obvious that the Incinera is about to come back in. So what I want to do is make a double. Or just a double switch, not, not doubling into a Pokemon. Yeah, there it is. Their play here should be to go for a Darkest Lariat into my Marowak slot and a Flamethrower into my Kartana slot. So what I can do is actually switch out my Marowak for the... Um, what am I saying? So if they're going for a Darkest Lariat into Marowak, then I should get Moltres in for the Marowak. And if they're going for a Flamethrower into Kartana, I should get Tapu Koko in for Kartana. And Celestila does not like staying in versus this. Alright. Get him big Moltres. As they flash cannon. Alright, pretty inconsequential. And Burning Jealousy. Alright, interesting. So, I don't believe they have anything on, on their team that actually can outspeed me. And I just got my Berserk boost. Oh no, the opponent has to knock me into that range, don't they? So the Sandstorm doesn't count. I, I would say there's absolutely no chance the Celesteela stays in here. It's way too threatened. Or at least doesn't protect, you know? Um, we already know what their last Pokemon is. I think what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and... Nasty Plot up. Set up a Reflect. Or actually, no. I'm. Do I do that? Yeah, I think I, I have to Nasty Plot here. And I try to Reflect. Because Celesteela should not stay in. Yeah, okay. Protects, makes sense. Flare Blitz should not put me in range to get KO'd. Not after this Reflect. Nasty Plot up. And I still have my Cortana in the back, in case things go south. There's the Parting Shot. Cool. Still at plus one. I can live with that. Can you? There's the Rillaboom, and I, I really need to get rid of the Rillaboom if I want to win. Because at that point, uh, Tapu Koko just cleans up. Sandstorm's gone, which is great news. Because now my uh, my Moltres isn't taking any residual. This Rillaboom is 100%, it is 100% about to fake out. That's the thing. That's about to happen. So my play here should be to protect on the fake out. I almost want to get in a Lola Whack, but it's not worth it. Because <laughs> I'll give them a free Beast Boost if they Flash Cannon into Coco. Or even Earthquake. I also don't want to give them a free Grassy Glide KO, so I'll get in Kartana. And Rillaboom are typically like Assault Vested or something, so I think I might just double into it and try to pick up a KO. Because Air Slash into... Um, was it Air Slash into Sacred Sword will pick up either Incineroar or the Rillaboom, so that'll get me the lead I need to win. As long as they don't double out here, but I think they have to fake out. If they want any chance of winning, they have to fake out or Grassy Glide. Yep, there's the fake out. Into Kartana, hopefully no flamethrower. Epic. Epic. So like I said, I wanna I wanna assume that they're actually I wanna assume that they are running an assault vest on this Rillaboom, so Sacred Sword into Light Screen should or into uh Air Slash should do it. Even if the Incineroar comes out. We'll go with that. Celesteela can flamethrower, but as long as I can get it to that situation I want where I can just, you know, KO it, we're good. Uh, and unless the Rillaboom, like, protects here, I think I just win. 
But like I said, it's typically assault vest. Oh no, they're not assault vest. A bit concerning. I cannot lie, a bit concerning. Hmm. I still want to air slash on that Rillaboom, but I have to protect now. I'll protect and get in the Coco. Coco from this position is not bad. Because I still have my Reflect up. And unless they double into the Kartana slot, I'm good. It's all about getting one really good one really good play. They withdraw. Okay, I think this is the position I want. Because Incineroar doesn't typically carry Protect either. I should be able to safely go for Air Slash into Thunderbolt unless they Parting Shot. Ugh, they Parting Shot. Dang, dude, they're on top of it. They're on top of it. I don't think they get a KO by going for Fake Out into my <laughs> into my uh, Moltres plus Splash Cannon, but it's also not a safe play to let them do that. I, I have to get rid of Rillaboom. I don't think I get KO'd by Flash Cannon here, especially if I go for a Light Screen as well. So we'll Air Slash into Rillaboom and go for the Light Screen. I, I, can't, I have to stop playing passively. Oh, they crit me. Are you kidding me? I think that's what they needed. I think that's what they needed to be able to knock me out. The air slash? Come on. Okay, we survived, but now the grassy glide's a threat. That's so annoying. So, what do I do here? I... I they're going to read the Protect. I think they have to read the Protect. They could Grassy Glide into Moltres, but the Protect is so obvious that I want to just go for the Air Slash and try to take the game like that. And we'll go Kartana here. So I can try to get my, my thing up. So if they Grassy Glide, they win. But I don't know if they do that. Tell me you didn't Grassy Glide. Ah, okay. Well, that's annoying. Uh, the, the Fake Out crit definitely mattered there because of the Reflect. It put me in range where the Grassy Glide would do it. Which is never a fun situation. I have to play really aggressively now. I think my play is just to double into this um, Incineroar. <laughs> and hopefully um, hopefully I can get him with a stray Thunderbolt. Oh, not that. So I go for my Thunderbolt into the Incineroar. As well as my Sacred Sword. I'm hoping that will KO, but it's it's so close, man. It's so close. So they withdraw the Rillaboom, okay? Go for the fake out. Into the wrong Pokemon, which is phenomenal. That's not the Pokemon they needed to fake out. Get some good damage there. And here they should protect the Celesteela. And probably just hard switch out their Incineroar for the um They should hard switch out their Incineroar for the Rillaboom here. Do I still have Reflect? I have one turn of Reflect. 
Celestila has revealed Protect, Flash Cannon, Air Slash, and Leech Seed, so he actually doesn't have anything to hit the Kartana very hard. So I feel comfortable just trying to hit it like this. He withdraws. I'm going to get some decent damage off here. It's about chip now. Alright. I almost went for the um, Aerial Ace, but it wasn't worth the read. Alright, getting some chip. There's the Leech Seed. Tabu Coco avoids. Hey, and that's revenge for the crit. My team's Reflect wears off. Uh, what I'm going to do here is give him the Marowak. In exchange for damage on the Rillaboom, because he should fake out Coco. You could also double back out into the uh, into the Incineroar, and if he does that, uh, I think I think my play would be to get out Kartana on the next turn, like just to switch it out, switch it back in, reset those Intimidates. They withdraw the Celesteela. Okay, so I'm assuming they Grassy glided. This aerial ace is going to do an, is going to be doing enough where it kind of matters. Yep. Okay. As he has a flying berry. Oh my god! Everything gets worse. Battle ends in forty nine seconds. Oh my god. Am I going to get timer stalled? I can't let him get any KOs here. That's the issue. And I think he has more overall HP. I have to make a read. Okay, here's how I win. Flare Blitz into the Rillaboom right now. Because otherwise I, I lose by, by average HP, I think. If I get in the Coco and... No, I don't. Maybe I just protect? I think I just go by timer. Yeah, my win cons timer. He has to fake out. And I have to hope he doesn't Flare Blitz. No, I lose. <laughs> I lose because of average HP. Oh my god. Okay, well, I mean, two losses today, that isn't too bad. Like, I'm not going to do a third battle, mainly because it's already been like a half hour. <laughs> I've been recording for like a half hour, and that last game went to timer. So, two battles today. Unfortunately, like, I, I didn't get to show off the team as well as I hoped. Like I said, I did really well with this team in the tournament. Uh, but ladder is a whole different, it's a whole different thing. But yeah, if you enjoyed at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one where I'll be trying to not lose. <laughs> Have a nice one, guys.